This world is not the end world. Look forward to the akhirah, the eternal world. Don't concentrate on this dunya. You shall get maybe not exactly what you want, but you will get enough good that you will be happy and content. Whenever Allah takes something away and you're patient, Allah gives you something better than what He has taken away. Allah will give you and give you and give you until you will be content. He didn't say He will give you what you want, but Allah will give you until you're happy with Allah's qadr and decree. You might not see it right now, but after many years you will see, indeed this was better than what I perceived before. Allah says in Surah Al-Talaq, and He, Allah, will provide him from sources he never could imagine. And whosoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Verily, Allah will accomplish his purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. Let's begin with the first sentence in this verse. When we are faced with a difficult situation, and when things seem completely out of our control, we are reminded that nothing is outside of Allah's control, especially when there seems to be no way out of a particular situation, when in fact, we cannot even conceive of a solution. This is when Allah gives us even greater help, in fact, help that comes outside the realms of human capability and understanding. We often will lose hope in something because our rational minds are doing the thinking. Maybe it's an essay deadline. Maybe we're trying to arrive somewhere on time and we have got delayed. Maybe someone is unwell. Maybe a community is being oppressed. Or maybe we cannot get a job, any other risk. But here, Allah is telling us that His help goes beyond human imagination. If we ask Allah based on what we think is possible, then we will miss out on the otherworldly, miraculous nature of Allah's help. Musa alayhi salam understood this when he was trapped between the Red Sea and the army of Fir'aun. Maryam alayhi salam understood this as she bravely returned to her people with baby Jesus alayhi salam in her arms. And so too did Zakaria alayhi salam when he prayed for a child. Though he and his wife were in their old age, they were not just pious people. They were smart and open-minded too. The more someone's mind is open to the power of Allah, the higher she will aim, and the more she will achieve in this life and the next, inshallah. If we look at the second sense in the verse, Allah tells us about another reward that comes with trusting Him, and that is the reward of contentment and peace. This is the meaning of, and Allah is sufficient for Him. When something is sufficient, it means you're satisfied. You need nothing else and seek nothing else. It means you're at ease with whatever Allah has willed for you and recognize there is good even in things that seems to be negative. This demonstrates that complete tawakkan is also the thing that gives a human being emancipation and dignity. Dignity is when you are not humiliated by base desires and subjugation. Tawakkan means, therefore, that we are freeing ourselves of the need for the help or approval of the creation. The last two sentences where Allah tells us He will accomplish His purpose and has a measure for all things is a reminder that our provision is already written. All our provisions were already written for us 50,000 years before we were born. Our successes and so-called failures in this dunya are decreed, but the real success is in fact being able to pass the test, either by showing gratitude for the successes or showing sabr and contentment when the failures occur. There may be something we are trying to accomplish, but ultimately it can never succeed if Allah did not will it. Allah has a purpose that supersedes all our plans. So when we have tried with something and it still doesn't work, then we must realize that Allah is in control, not us. And rather than feeling disappointed by that, we should try to understand that everything Allah decrees for us has wisdom in it. Whatever you're facing in life, it is in fact a fulfillment of a plan, the accomplishment of a purpose, specially designed and tailored for each and every individual. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and it may be that you dislike a thing while it is good for you. And it may be that you love a thing while it is evil for you. And Allah knows while you know not. The lesson from the test is often more valuable and a greater achievement than the original thing we were seeking. The meaning of this verse should also act as a reassurance that when others are working against those who do good, against the deen and against the truth, then they ultimately will fail even if we can't perceive this. For Allah has only given them respite for a short time 
before he destroys their plan. This was often the case with evil communities in the past. Allah gave them short-term, superficial successes, which made them feel arrogant for a while. But in the end, their plans and their plots failed. We see this in the examples of Ad, Thamud, and the people of the ditch, and the Pharaoh. Amazing stories in the Quran that we should study and seek to draw lessons from. So the final conclusion is that we need to reprogram our way of thinking to not limit Allah's power and aid to what we think is rationally possible. Know that we humans have a bounded rationality that cannot perceive the endless capacity of Allah's will. And we should reconfigure our minds to truly recognize that Allah can command and facilitate anything for us. Also, we need to remind ourselves that worrying and fretting about things that Allah has already decreed and measured out perfectly for us is a pointless exercise. We should just get on with what is in our hands. Do what we can in the circumstances we're currently in and keep making dua for the best. Yes, the very best. Why not? From Allah, the Most High. Practical tips to achieve the above. Make dua for that which seems impossible. Keep trying with whatever practical means are available. Even if, no, especially if you think the doors have already closed. That is when rushing to catch a plane and the check-in desk has already closed, that job application, no matter how fierce the competition might seem, when a deadline is looming and you need to ask for an extension, but doubt it will be given. Such times are when your trust in Allah are pushed to the very limit. Will you still persevere? Listen to the Quran and especially be familiar with the stories of the prophets and the salihin, the righteous, peace be upon them. Their actions in deep conviction will help to challenge our skepticism and will broaden our minds to appreciate the power of Allah. Be around those people who will give you hope and encouragement, those who will help you to avoid regret, who give constructive advice, and who pick up with the positive side of things. Look out for and memorize special verses in the Quran, supplications from the Sunnah that will increase our tawakkul. And finally, what can we do when things are still going apparently badly, when our trust and efforts don't seem to be leading to the outcome we hoped for? In that case, pause, reflect, and purposefully ask ourselves, what is Allah teaching me through this? What negative habit, quality, is He wanting me to let go of? What material things do I still need to detach myself from? What positive outcomes are there that I am overlooking? Are the consequences of this negative situation really that awful? That I should be getting this wound up about it? Could it be that this negative outcome is just one small, short-term phase on the way to an overall victory in the long term? When Allah tests us, He's simply teaching us. And He will keep giving us those mock exams before the big exam until we learn. And if you do learn and you get what the lesson is about, then congratulations. That's a very precious blessing.